All right, today we're going to be working through Microsoft Word, and we're going to be learning how to make things bold, uh, underline, change text. Really, we're going to spend the majority of the time today learning how to edit text, uh, why we edit text. We're going to learn some shortcuts to edit text, uh, and we're even going to learn how to make a hyperlink like you see here. And a hyperlink is nothing more than a place where you can click in a document and it will take you to a website. It's pretty much expected these days that if you want someone to go to your website, you're going to make it easy for them and you're going to give them a hyperlink uh, where they can just click something and it'll take them to your website. There's a couple of benefits to that. One of those benefits is you make sure that they don't go to the wrong website. Uh, Mission Africa, for instance, uh, there are multiple Mission Africas across the United States. Uh, so we are missionafrica.us. If you tell people just go to Mission Africa's website, they could end up going to the wrong one. And so it's really nice to have a, a hyperlink like you see here because we can direct them with a click of a button directly to our website. It ensures they get to the right place for the right information. So for today's class, we're gonna be making this uh, flyer here for a job fair. Uh, like we discussed a little bit ago, right? One of the things you wanna do when you're making any type of a Word document is you wanna you know, uh, make things bold, you wanna make them big and, and big fonts uh, if you want them to stick out. And then uh, down here, one of the things I like that we did on this document is we have some, um, some bullet points and bullets are really nice when you want to make a list right so let's say um you know it's almost school time for instance if you wanted to make a back to school shopping list you could easily do that in microsoft word uh and just have a list and you can even uh, change your bullets instead of them being little dots they can be little check boxes like this and you can make your um back to school shopping list pretty easy in Microsoft Word. And then you print it out, go to the store and you got all your check boxes. Of course you could write it down, but you could also use a computer to do it. And then you could save that for next year. And then next year you just edit uh, the items that you're buying, right? So you don't have to start over from scratch. You can use something that you already had. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna move this off the screen. Let me just stop sharing for a second. And we are gonna go ahead and recreate that so here we go. All right, so, okay, yep, we're ready to go. So the first thing you wanna do uh, whenever you wanna start a new Microsoft document is you always, of course, want to open uh, either from here. So this is called your, um, taskbar here at the bottom. Uh, you have these little buttons. These are called icons at the bottom. All these icons will do and open up a new program. So this is the icon for Microsoft Word where we make documents. It's a little blue icon. It has the W in it. If you don't have this on your computer um, and you do and you know you have Microsoft Word on your computer, the other way to find it is this search button over here. And this little search button uh, here at the bottom, and for some folks on your windows, it might be a search button in the bottom, in the middle. Mine is set up to be over here to the left, uh, but it does the same function. And you can just click in there and just type what you want to do. So if you wanted to find Microsoft Word, you would just type Word like we did here, and it comes up, and you can just click Open. Notice that it also shows a lot of the previous documents that you have opened. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and open it, and I'm going to do New. And when you do new, notice that you have various options. So you can create a new blank document. You can create a summer flyer. You can create a report. So these are called templates, all of these things. I like this one right here. I think I showed this last class. I'll go ahead and just click it just really quick. Um, I really like this template because this is a really great one when kids are home during the summer. Uh, and they need something to do instead of be on their uh, devices and playing video games all day. <laughs> so I really like this one because it helps me to uh, come up with like a family task list, things that they can do chores around the house. And I can just type in a name, right? Let's say I'm doing breakfast dishes, but we got somebody else's doing, I got Zoe doing dinner dishes and maybe Christian's going to mop the floor. And then once this is all typed up, 
you can just print this out, put it on the refrigerator, and everyone knows what they need to do. So uh, really nice to have, have templates in Microsoft Word. Saves you a lot of time having to design things like this. And for most things, I would say 99% of things that you want to do in Microsoft Word, there's probably a template for it. So you don't have to start from scratch. Uh, you can start with uh, something like this. So I'm going to close this out. And to close something, you either can click this X up here to close it, or we can go to File and then Close. So I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to save it. That'll be a different class. So for now, let's go to File. We're going to do New, and we're going to do New Blank Document. All right. So we've got our new blank document. Uh, as we discussed in the last class, one of the things that you can do uh, to zoom in and out is you can hold down the control button on your keyboard. And, and uh, let me turn on my camera so I can show this to you. So to zoom out, so you see there's this uh, rolly button here on your mouse. So you can use that to zoom in and out, but you have to hold down the control button at the same time. So let's say I, I notice here, I don't see the whole entire page. If I wanna see the whole entire page, I can hold down the control button on my keyboard and pull this back towards me. And that's for zooming out. And then I can zoom in right here. There's Erica. Say hi, Erica, you're on camera. <laughs> so you can zoom in and you can zoom out right there, okay? So zooming in and zooming out. Yep. Okay. And that's by holding down the control button and rolling that forward or rolling that backwards. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start with making our document. I'm going to actually pull up the old one so that we can see it as we make this one. So this is what we are designing right here, okay? So it may not look exactly like this, but we'll get pretty close, okay? All right, so the first thing we wanna do, I'm not gonna do the QR code. Uh, I'm just gonna start with like the words here, okay? Um, you know what, actually I wanna show you guys a quick shortcut. So if you ever have a document like this, and this is a PDF, so on PDFs, you can't necessarily change. So notice I can't like, add a bunch of things here. No, normally PDFs are kind of a um, locked down document, so you can't edit them very much, but you can copy and paste them. So let's, let's see what happens. I'm not sure exactly what's gonna happen here, but let's test it out. But if I select, so to select all of this text here on this PDF document, I can just put my cursor here. So the cursor is that blinking, see that blinking line? So that's the beginning of where I'm gonna select. And I'm gonna actually click and hold using my mouse. I wanna click and hold using my mouse and I'm gonna select everything, okay? So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna select everything that's on this page. Notice that when you select, it does uh, show that it's selected by giving it that dark blue background. Uh, so now I'm going to right click and I'm gonna just do copy. So what does that do? So that's going to copy all of the text that I highlighted. So everything from Minneapolis, all the way through the date, the time, the location, the website, and even down to the different little list that are there at the bottom. So I highlighted it. Step two was to right click on the highlighted area. And then I'm gonna just use my normal mouse click to click on copy. Now it's not gonna look like anything happened and that's okay. Uh, but if we come over here to the blank document now, I'm going to zoom out so you guys can see this. Now here on the blank document, I can come over here to paste. So what did I do? I copied this from this old document. And let's see what happens when we paste. So there's a couple different ways to paste. If I paste and I keep formatting, look, it just pasted it right into this blank document. Now it didn't do a perfect job, but it did get a lot of the formatting. It, it got the bold, it got the, some of the colors, the spacing isn't exactly uh, right, but it did a pretty good job of bringing over that information. So if I wanted again to recreate it the way that it was in the PDF, I would just have a little bit of a cleanup here to do. But I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna actually start back over because I wanna show everyone how to do it from scratch, but I did wanna just demonstrate the power of copy paste. So anytime you see text, it could be on a website, it could be in a separate document. Um, you can always select, 
you can right click, copy, and you can paste to a document. You can do that from anywhere on the internet or anything on your computer pretty much. Okay, copy paste is very, very powerful when you have text that you need to get from one document to another. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this out. We're gonna not save and let's go back to file new. And once again, we're going to start with a blank document. So again, this is what we want to create here. Let's just get rid of this. So this is the document that we want to create. So I'm going to start by writing the word just Minneapolis at the top with a capital M. So again, to get a capital M, and we've covered this in a previous class, so I won't spend a lot of time on this. Um, if you want to go back to our classes on YouTube, I did put them in the chat. Uh, you can always go back and review. Uh, we have a class on, um, you know, writing uh, like capital letters versus lowercase letters and things like that. But to get a capital letter, you can hold down shift and just press the letter that you want. So if I just press M, for instance, I'm going to get a lowercase M. If I hold down shift and press M, I'm going to get an uppercase M. So I want to spell the word Minneapolis. It's a hard word to spell. Why'd they give me that one? That's okay. <laughs> so I've got Minneapolis there, but notice that this one is like in the middle of the page. It's bold. It kind of stands out. And so normal text, as you see up here, so we're on the home tab, as we discussed in our last class, we're here on the home tab. So each one of these tabs brings lots of different options of things you can do in Microsoft Word. In the insert tab, you can insert photos, you can insert links, online videos, you can insert art, all kinds of fun stuff. On the draw tab, of course, you can draw, right? So you can draw on, on there. I'm gonna just undo that. Uh, on the home tab, you have things like changing your font and your font is what your letters look like. So as you see here, there's a ton of different fonts. Um, you know, this Adlam display looks different than Algerian, looks different than uh, one of the, some of the popular ones that you'll be familiar with are Arial or Times New Roman. I would say those are the two most standard ones in business writing. And then a normal size text is 12. Uh, why is that important? Uh, when your kids are writing reports, if you have kids that are in school, their teachers normally will tell them, hey, uh, when you write that paper, let's make sure we use size 12 or size 14 font. Well, why do they do that? Because maybe they have to write a one page paper. Well, if they do size 72 font, how long is it gonna take them to write one page? <laughs> Not very long. They're gonna write maybe 10 words and they're gonna have a full page. So font size is really important. Uh, but for this case, let's try and match it. So we have Minneapolis right here. So I'm going to, anytime you want to change text, you have to select the word that you want to change or the words that you want to change. So in this case, we want to change uh, and edit this text here. And what do we want to do? We want to make it bold and we want to make it centered. Uh, I'm going to click the B here. That's going to make it bold. Notice that it got bolder. So this B here is for making things bold. This I is for making things italics. And then the U is to add an underline. So I'm going to undo all of these. And these are all toggle buttons, the B, the I, and the U. A toggle button is much like a light switch uh, at your house, right? It's either on or it's off. So the same thing with the toggle switch. So I'm going to zoom in just a little here again so we can see Minneapolis. I want to highlight Minneapolis and I'm going to make it bold. So it's nice and bold. I'm going to actually go ahead and change the font also. So while it's already selected, let's go to, uh, let's find something fun. Uh, you know what? We'll go with this one here. It's nice and big, it's bold, but it's a little bit too big, right? So let's go backwards. Let's maybe do 36. You know what? I'm gonna do a little bit bigger, 48. Okay, so we're size 48, it's pretty big, but it's still off to the left side of the page, right? We want it in the middle of the page. So the easiest way to do that is again, from your home tab here, you have this ribbon. So the ribbon is the area that comes up when you click the different tabs. So the home tab, you get this ribbon. If you go to layout tab, you get this ribbon here. So back in the home tab, 
Uh, I'm going to select the word again, and I want to make it center align. So center is going to bring it to the middle, and it's, the computer is going to automatically know where the middle is. So to do that, you can see that there's a button here. So again, over here, we have our bold italics underlined. So if we go to the right, and as you move your mouse over different icons in the ribbon, it tells you what each one does. So this one will align left, align center, align right. So we want to align center. So I'm just going to click that and notice that it moves my words right to the middle. So again, as we zoom out now, you can see that we're starting to match. So we got our first word, Minneapolis. We made it bold and we put it right in the middle. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go to job. We want to go down a line and add job fair. So to go down a line, let, me let someone in. To go down to the next line, uh, you need to move your cursor to the end and hit enter on your keyboard. Okay, it's going to keep the same formatting as the line above it. So if I start to type right now, notice that it looks similar format and similar font as the line that's above it. So I'm just going to remove that using backspace. And let's go ahead and type job fair. Okay. I'll keep the same font, no problem, uh, but I do want to make it green and I want to do an underline. So to do that, again, what's the first step we want to do? Anytime we want to edit text that's already there, we need to highlight the text. And then it gives us some options up here on what is the color of the font. So notice here it says font. All of this is for changing the font, right? So this is kind of the title for this section. Under paragraph, you have a bunch of things you can do to your paragraphs. You have style, et cetera. So again, under font, we want to change the color to this green that we see over here. So let's do that. So we've got job fair selected. I'm going to go here. And there's a lot of colors that we can choose from. But notice this one's pretty bright. And I don't see one that is that bright. So we have more options. These are your basic options here in this palette. But if you want more options, you can come here to more colors. So again, let's look at how I got there. So I highlighted job fair. If I don't, if I wanted red, I could just click the A, this red. It'll change it to red. But I want green. I want highlighter green. So I need to select it. And I have to go to this little arrow next to the A and hit that. And then it gives me lots of different options but I, I still don't see that highlighter green. So let's go to more colors and it's gonna give me all of the options. So now I can get a little bit more specific and I say, oh, there's that highlighter green that I like. Click on that and hit okay. And there we go. We got that highlighter green we were looking for. It does look like this is a little bit smaller text. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Again, to make the text smaller and the font smaller, two ways to do that. We can choose uh, the number here, and I can just select a smaller number. Or while it's, again, highlighted, I can increase the font using this button. So every time I click it, it's going to increase the font. Or the button next to it, you see the A with the down arrow is to decrease the font. So we can kind of play with that until we like it. Uh, this is a little bit easier text. So I'm just going to find something that's not quite so bold. Uh, let's go with Arial. That's about right. And then lastly, notice that we have a underline here where it says job fair. So I'm again going to select the text and we're just going to select underline from the home ribbon. And there we are. I want to pause for a second. Are there any questions so far about some of the things we've done? You know. All right, sounds good. I'll keep going. All right, uh, so the next thing we want to do is we want to add the date. Uh, I'll uh, actually make that like today's date or something, the date and the time, okay? So again, I'm gonna come down here, uh, again, starting with my cursor at the end of job fair. Because if, if my cursor's here in the middle of job fair and I hit enter, it's gonna bring everything to the right of my cursor down. So it's important to have your cursor at the end when you hit enter, and then it comes down to the next line. 
uh, again, if I start typing though, it's still in that same format. So before we start typing this time, let's go ahead and get it into this, this plain text kind of format. So just black, no bold or anything like that. So let's go ahead and take off bold. We're gonna take off underline and let's see, probably go a little bit smaller with maybe a 28 and I'm gonna start typing. So I, I believe it starts on, oh, I st I'm still in green. So I need to go to my text color and go to black. All right, Wednesday, what's today? Today's Thursday. Thursday. Let's, put today. Let's put Thursday, August 15th, 2024. And we'll say that it was from, actually, let's make it for tomorrow. Because if we make the flyer for today, we already missed it. So we're making a flyer for tomorrow. It's Thursday, August 16th, 2024, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. All right, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then I'm going to hit enter again, because notice here, we have a space. So this tells me that like, so these lines are close to each other. There's no space here, but there is an extra space in between the time and the location. So I'm going to go ahead and I put an extra space in there. And let's go ahead and put the uh, location. So let's say it's at the water hotel at one, two, three main street in federal way Washington 98042 okay uh, again notice here theirs is a little bit smaller um, I will leave it for now how big we have it if we run out of space we may need to come back and make this a little bit smaller because we do when you make a flyer of course you do want everything on one page so this is what we're looking like so far uh, we are yeah we'll probably need to make it a little bit smaller because we still got quite a bit of information down here to add. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So again, to make it smaller, what's the first step to making your text smaller? Somebody remind me. Highlight. Highlight. Yep. So let's go ahead and highlight it. And the highlight, I'm just clicking and holding. And then I'm holding, holding, and then I release when I've got everything highlighted. So I can release. And then we can just so come like up here. Number? and make it smaller. Yeah, yeah, we can use the number or make the here, mm -hmm. or, we, or we can use the buttons to click, 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 so we can kind of play around with that. Uh, okay, I'm actually gonna take that space out because I think we're gonna need the space to make sure we get everything in. Uh, okay, so we've got our address, we have our time, our date, uh, we're moving along. So the next thing we wanna do is uh, we wanna write this text here meet with companies who want to hire employees now. So let's come here. We'll do an enter, enter. Meet with companies who want to hire employees, all caps now, exclamation mark. Okay. All right, so we've got that. Notice theirs is on one line. So because theirs is on one line and mine is on two lines, how can I get this to be on one line like theirs is? If I make this text smaller, do you think it may go on one line like they have here? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yes. let's try that. So let's highlight and let's make the text smaller and see if we can get all that on one line. So size 20, still not quite there. Uh, make it go down one more. There we go. So size 18 gets all that on one line. And so let's come down to the next line again. And we have for more information and to sign up, visit. So let's type that for more. And look at that. Did you see what it did there? So Microsoft Word and a lot of these programs we work with, they've actually gotten pretty smart at anticipating what you're typing, which is really nice function. It's a little bit of a, um, we've all heard about artificial intelligence. So that's exactly what this is. So as you are typing in Microsoft Word and Google Docs does the same thing, as you're typing, it's anticipating what you might want to say. So watch what happens. So I said for more, as I type, all I did was type I. 
and it already knows that I'm about to type the word information. So again, this is something that makes working in Microsoft Word easier and faster is that if it thinks it knows what you're about to do, it'll come up. Notice that it's kind of a light gray. Um, it's not like the black. So that's telling me that it's a suggestion. If I don't want it, I can just keep typing. But if I like it, it's telling me to hit the tab button on my computer. Let me uh, turn on my screen and show you guys the tab button. Actually, you know what? Let me... Uh, I have a keyboard here that I can show you. So so this is what a normal keyboard looks like. And this button right here is tab. So of course we have our keyboard. Enter is the button that we use to move down a line. Backspace is how we delete things. Uh, to the left of the cursor or delete if you want to remove things to the right. We have our numbers up at the top, but this tab button is the one that is telling me if I hit tab right now, it's going to finish that word for me. So let's go back and I'm going to type I and it says, oh, you're about to type the word information. Hit tab if you want me to complete it. So instead of continuing to type and potentially make a typo, <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, I can just hit the tab button and it finishes that word for me, okay? So for more information, what were we typing? And to sign up, visit, okay? So for more information and to sign up, let's see how they did it, comma, visit, and to sign up, comma, visit, colon, next line, so uh, this is where it gets fun. So for them, they put jobsfairsminneapolis.com. Uh, we can we can do that. That's fine. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to act like I'm, we're doing a hiring for Mission Africa. Okay. And uh, we're going to direct them to the Mission Africa website because we want them to go there and apply for a job. So I'm going to just type Mission Africa. And of course, this doesn't go anywhere yet, but now we're going to add a hyperlink. Uh, and a hyperlink, again, is where we're going to make this an active link. So if someone were to receive this electronically, they could click on the link and it would take them directly to the Mission Africa website. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to just bring over my internet. All right, so here's the uh, a normal internet browser. So you can see here, I am at the Mission Africa website. So to get the website, you have to click up here to get the entire website. So notice initially it was just missionafrica.us. So I have to double click, I'll show you again. So let's go to missionafrica.us. So again, if I click once up here, it shows me the abbreviated website. If you double click up there, it shows you the entire website address. So anyone from any computer or any device connected to the internet, if they go on their phone and then the address bar, which is what this area is called, they type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash missionafrica.us, it will bring them to this website. Uh, and so I wanna make a hyperlink in my document to it. So I'm gonna just select this entire URL this is, again, the electronic address that goes to missionafrica.us. So I'm selecting it. And like we learned earlier, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to do copy. OK, again, it looks like nothing happened, but it's uh, what we called it's on the clipboard. So it's there. It's just in the background. And I'm going to go back to our uh, document here and to create a hyperlink to make this go to missionafrica.us website. Again, because there's multiple Mission Africas, we wanna make sure that they're going to the right one. All we have to do is select Mission Africa. We can right click like we did earlier. So we can right click and it gives us a bunch of options. So we can cut, copy, paste, uh, there's a couple of things we can do with the font and the paragraph, but down here, there's one that says link. So a link is going to create a hyperlink. So let's go ahead and click on that. And it brings up this little dialog box here. So it says text to display, Mission Africa. 
So we already know that. And then here's asking for the address. So this is where I want to paste the address of Mission Africa, or it will actually bring in websites you recently visited if you just click this uh, drop down here. So missionafrica.us is the full website. And then I want to hit OK. And let me go and close out my browser. Just going to close everything out so I don't have any internet pages open. And now when I bring my mouse on top of this, what does it do? It brings up this little box that says hit control plus click to follow this link. So again, using my keyboard, and I'll bring up the keyboard really quick. Where's the control button? It's right here. In the bottom left-hand corner, there's always two of them on each keyboard. Bottom left-hand corner and the bottom right-hand corner. So it's telling me to activate that hyperlink. I need to hold down control and then click using my mouse. So let's go do that. So I'm going to hold down control. Notice when I hold down control that my mouse turns into a little hand. Watch my mouse. So you see my mouse, the little uh, kind of that um, looks like a capital I. So as I hold down control, my mouse turns into a hand. That's telling me it's ready to activate that hyperlink. So now I click. It opens up the internet and automatically takes me to Mission Africa's website. Hand clap, hand clap. Okay. That's really cool. This is a big deal because uh, now you can ensure, uh, and many of you, I'm sure, get emails all the time. You even get text messages that says, hey, click on our link and go to our website. Like, you know, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Uh, oh, look at me. I'm on the website. I just noticed that. Um, and so, yes, that is how you create a hyperlink. Any questions on that before we proceed? All right, great. You guys are getting it. We are going to have a review at the end. So I'll ask you guys some questions about some of these things we've done today. All right, let's see where we're at. So we have created the majority of the flyer. We've essentially done um, all of these parts here. So our last thing to do is we want to have some time and we want to say, what should you bring? And we want to give them a short list. And then we want to have a question that says, what will you do at the job fair? And we'll name a couple things. All right. So I'm going to click back on our document. I'm going to zoom out. I always like to zoom out using the control and that reverse uh, wheel to just see how much space I have left. So it's still looking like we should do OK on space. So let's go to the end of Mission Africa. I'm going to hit Enter. I want to hit Enter twice just to give a little space between the hyperlink and where we're going to start. So, so far, everything has been in the middle of the page. And so we haven't needed to mess with our alignment. But now notice that these questions are back on the left side, right? Which is the normal way that we would read, right? Uh, hold on one second. Oh, I clicked the button. Okay, there we go. So when I click here, notice that my cursor is still in the middle of the page. I want it back over here to the left so I can duplicate what we see on this other one. So again, under paragraph here, under paragraph, again, remember we had the left align, align center or align to the right. So we can hit left align and notice that it brings my cursor back over here to the left. And from there, all we have to do is just uh, start typing. So what's the first one? What should I bring or what should you bring? What should you bring? Question mark. We go down to the next line and and they have these little uh, buttons. So I, I, and I like these, I don't know about you guys. I like having these little uh, kind of check marks. Uh, it's nice when you give folks flyers and they have a little check mark there. It reminds them to kind of check that off before they leave and so that they know what to expect. So here I am, I'm in the place, I'm getting ready to add my bullets. So to add those bullets, let me make my screen a little bit bigger. I'm just going to cover up this one so you can see it. So there's a couple options for bullets, and they're under the paragraph area. So we have this one here. So if I just wanted dots, I could just click here. If I wanted numbers, I could click here. But we want those little uh, kind of those check boxes. So to look for those, I can hit that down arrow, 
and it gives us some options. So I like this one. This one's pretty close to what we saw on the example. So I'm going to click on that and notice it gives me that little uh, kind of that little checkbox. And this one, it's an empty circle. And then I'm going to write uh, some of the things. I think it was like bring, you know, what should you bring? Copy a resume, pencil, and contact information. Okay. And when you hit enter after contact information, it thinks that you're going to the next bullet point, but you're done. And so to tell it to end the list, we just hit backspace on our uh, keyboard. It deletes that bullet. But now we want to go again back to the left. So let's go backspace one more time and then one more time backspace. And there we are. And then the last one, let's see what we got, is what will you do at the job fair? So let's go ahead. I'm going to actually, let's see how much space. Oh, we don't have a lot of space. Okay, we'll fix that in a second. What will you do at the job fair? Now it's going to go down to page two here shortly. So up oh, there it goes, going down to page two. So we'll fix that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and finish writing it. And then we'll come back and adjust the size of some of this text to get it to all fit on one page. So you will meet with companies, introduce yourself, hand out copies of your resume, and you'll ask about jobs the company's hiring. So the first one is meet with each company, introduce yourself. So again, we're down here. We want to make sure we get the right kind of bullet to be consistent. So we're going to use the drop down and this one here. So meet with companies, introduce yourself, comma, introduce yourself. Going to hit enter. What's the second one? Give a copy of your resume. Enter. And then lastly, ask about jobs the company's hiring for. Ask about jobs the company is hiring for. All right, so we're done. Uh, we've created all of the content, but ours went on to two pages. Let's zoom out and see. So see, we went a page and a quarter, right? So we went a little bit too big. Some of our fonts a little bit too big. So we're gonna need to go back and adjust it a little bit to get it all on one page like we see here. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, I think the main thing we probably need to make smaller is these um, bullets at the bottom. So I'm just gonna highlight all of that area and let's just play around and see what we get. Let's go ahead and reduce the size one time. Uh, still not working. Also, I can take this space out here, see the space in between Mission Africa and the list. So I'm gonna delete that first space, uh, almost there. Uh, how about if we delete this space up here? Boom, that did it. So now we're all on one page. I'm gonna just hit backspace to get rid of that. So now we've got everything on one page. Let's take a look. Okay, a couple things we missed. Uh, we want green here and bold. And we uh, probably wanna make this a little bit bolder too. So who can tell me, how do I make this line green and how do I make it bold? Highlight first. Mm -hmm. Highlight? Mm -hmm. And then what's the then next step? Go the, then go under the, lay, the layout for the font and the color. I think it's okay, um, we'll, we'll start light bold. click. Yeah. Bold right here. Uh huh. So then to the color. Mm -hmm. And then which one is the color? Is it this one here, the text highlighting color, or do we want to change the font color? The, the font. Mm -hmm. And how do I change it to green? Do I click this A or do I need to click this uh, kind of this down arrow here? Click the down arrow. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then choose the color that we want. And then notice that last time we didn't have this color, but Microsoft Word is smart. It recognizes, hey, last time you said you wanted this unique color that wasn't here, and now it added it here. So now we can just click there. There we go. Yep. And then what was the last thing? Uh, making this blue. So who can help me? Someone else. Is there anyone that can help me? Let's change Mission Africa to blue and make it bold. We're going to highlight it. Thank you, Deborah. So highlight it. Mm -hmm. 
and then click on the the beep for bold mm -hmm. and then um we're gonna go to the 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 a over there okay and down arrow okay on the font color and then we're gonna go to the blue color which is mm, let's yeah. do this one. this one sure now, because this is a uh, hyperlink, sometimes it'll keep it a certain color. Uh, so yeah, that one didn't quite take. Let's see. Because it's a hyperlink, it, I think it's going to be a little bit more stubborn. Yeah, it doesn't want to change colors. So that's fine. We'll just, we made it blue, but it didn't change because it's a hyperlink, uh, which is fine. Uh, okay, fantastic. So uh, a couple of things I, I also want to point out here is there's a couple shortcuts that you can use um, to also do the bold and the italics and the underline. I'll bring up our keyboard again. So to do bold, the shortcut for bold without having to use your mouse is control B. So again, I'll demonstrate. So if I wanted to make this bold, I could highlight it and then notice my mouse isn't going to move. What I'm going to do using my keyboard, I'm going to do control B. It makes it bold. And again, just like the buttons up top, it's a toggle. So if I do control B again, it takes it to unbold. If I do control, and I'm and when I say control, I mean I'm holding down control. And if I do control I, it makes it italics. Notice up here that this kind of emboldened. If I do control I again, it turns it back to regular text. And then lastly, control U will underline and control U again, will take it off. So those are a couple shortcuts that you can use um, because those shortcuts are gonna just help you move faster. Cause sometimes if you have a lot of work to do, it's a lot to come here and come keep coming up here and doing all this. Uh, you can just use your keyboard and go B U I, right? And it just knocks it out, it's much faster. Um, and there's a lot of different shortcuts in the different programs that we use, uh, but those are some of the main ones that you can use out there. Uh, Joseph, you wrote in the chat that you were lost. Which particular part did you get lost at? Was it making the hyperlink or was it making the uh, the bullet points here? I think it was the hyperlink. A hyperlink. Okay. Let me show that one more time. I'll demonstrate that one more time. Uh, so I'll delete it here. Uh, I'm going to come down here. So we have an extra space. Make sure we get everything back to black and so forth. Okay. So let's again do Mission Africa. But again, uh, if again, let's say that you were going to email this flyer out, right? You were going to put it on WhatsApp. Uh, and you were going to share it electronically. There's no reason to have a hyperlink if you're going to print this, right? Because obviously, if you're printing it, no one's going to be able to click it. But if you have an electronic document that you're going to be sharing electronically, hyperlinks can be very useful. And so we have our text here, and we want people to go to Mission Africa's website to apply for a job. So let's say there's a job posting here, right? Uh, so we first of all, need to grab the address of Mission Africa from the address bar here. So this is the entire address. Anyone who types that address on their phone or any electronic device connected to the internet is going to take them to the mission, this Mission Africa website, right? So if I just type in Mission Africa, let's see what comes up. So missionafrica.us is here, but then there's missionafrica.org.uk. Uh, there's missionafrica.org, an African Christian Mission International. So you can see how there's missionafricainc.org. So you can see how there can be confusion if you just tell people, hey, go to my website, Mission Africa. Well, if you don't be, if you're not specific, they can go to the wrong website, right? Uh, and then you have things happen like, hey, I went to your website and I donated a thousand dollars. Did you get it? And, and duty and the folks at Mission Africa that we work with are going to say, no, what are you talking about? Oh, I went to your website and I donated, right? Uh, and so it's important to make sure that people go to the right place. And one of the ways to ensure that is that uh, in, instead of just giving them the website address, we can give them a hyperlink. So then they go directly there. You get these a lot in emails, right? 
if you get our emails from Mission Africa Weekly, it typically will include some hyperlinks to different things. That way you don't have to like try and type stuff, especially if you're reviewing emails or documents on your phone to try and go to a website can be a little bit cumbersome. Uh, it's really nice if we provide a hyperlink for you and you can just click a link and it takes you to a website. So here we have the website. We're going to copy it. So again, I highlighted it. I right clicked and copy. And then we're going to go back to the document. We're going to highlight the text where we that we want to become the hyperlink. Okay. Again, on this text, I'm going to right click and it gives me a lot of options. One of those options is to create a link. So I'm going to go ahead to link. And then I'm going to paste. So here it's asking, where do you want this hyperlink to take your customer or the person that's clicking on it? So here I'm going to hit control V, which is just the shortcut for paste. I could also right click and paste. And it puts the web address for Mission Africa, the entire web address. It's important that you get the entire thing. Hit OK. And now notice it changed the font and it put that underline on it. So now if I want to go to that link, I just hold down Control and I click. And it goes to missionafrica.us.